pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we need a motion for approval of minutes. I read them and they've been reviewed. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. And we have an RDA uh, 24 count line. Uh, order? Someone can move to address the commission. So this is a request for determination um, to remove 11 trees. Um, most of the houses on Carlton are fairly new, but this one has been there for quite some time, and you almost can't see the house for the trees. So um, we have photos of, of what they'd like to remove as well. Um, the 100 foot buffer zone runs just off the back of the house. All of the trees are outside of the 25 foot um, no disturbance zone. So just to show you how close some of the trees are to the house, this one is not within jurisdiction, but you can see based on the photo that um, quite close to the house. Sorry for the display. It, it doesn't work quite the way it does it at Town Hall. Um, these are some of the closest trees to the wetland. Um, nope, still downloading. Um, here are some, I think you have some of the photos. That's the over, overall view, but these are the, the close up of the trees adjacent to the wetland. This photo shows um, a shed that's on the property, been there for some time. <coughs> and then we have, Heidi may have printed these out. I can, here we go. Here's some, here's what we're showing on the screen. Questions, uh, Al? Um, I guess my questions would be of Jen. You've been out to the site. Heidi has been to the site. Um, the applicants propose some replanting. I recommend um, the, the soil is very acidic, and as you can see from the photos, not much grows underneath it. So um, I would suggest maybe 10 high bush blueberry, you know, closer to the wetland. You could buy smaller ones and, yeah, and plant that. them sort of interspersed. But the hybris blueberry will grow well in the acidic soils, mm -hmm. get some blueberries potentially, and um, we get more of an understory when you remove some of that overstory. Hopefully there'll be a little more light on the property. Right. Yeah. You also proposed to put some soil at the end of the driveway and seed it to get yes. more of a level area. That also is just within jurisdiction, but... I think it's a little bit further from the 100-foot marker, but... Right. Um, Something else they proposed. Oh, no. Good for the moment. Yeah, too bad that tree next to the house wasn't a fruit tree. You could open the window and pick your own. I know. I, I wake up every morning. Is that a pear tree out there? I wish. Boy, that, that one's that's nasty. <laughs> that's, that's that's too close. The one in the corner is my daughter's window. To open that window and then put the leaves on it. Oh jeez. Well, there yeah, we go. Push it back to close the window. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm all set. Thank you. Yeah, I uh, I have no questions on this one. I. I drive by this lot all the time, and um, it needs light, and um, I think it's fine with a negative RDA with the uh, closest point being 30 feet from the wetland line. Sure. Right. No more questions. Okay. Well, what do you intend to do with the stumps? I'm sorry, can you see? What do you intend to do with the stumps? Crying. Yeah, she said leave them there because otherwise it'll it could have disturbed the uh, right. You the don't want to pull all that kind of stuff out. So she said grind or cut flush. Because I noticed in the area where you were going to uh, loam, there were some old stumps. Uh, there's a couple of old stumps, at least in the picture, they were that were there. Yeah. Yeah. Now you tend to grind them as well. I would think so. If you're going to loam the area. Yes. As well. I mean they're they're basically mush, but yes, we could grind those too. Okay, no problem. Yeah, you can see that one right there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Any more questions? Just, um, is there a, is there a cutting plan that you recommend, Jen? Uh, the last time we had a uh, a homeowner that wanted to cut, we had to uh, recommend that the the way the trees were taken down. For example, the last one we had like this, we didn't want the trees just felled and limbed on the ground. We wanted them taken down in sections. Um, I think they're going to crane these out of he's there. He's going right? to crane them out of there. Yeah. No, but I mean, when they're they're going to cut them cut them in sections and bring them down, they're not yep. going to just drop them. Right. 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 Yeah. They're going to oh. chop them. This is in pieces. right around their house, so okay, they're, they're going to be less, more concerning than the, as as than the other seem, trees is the house. I, I hear you, but sometimes you have to say it. Right. So uh, a cutting plan and a planting plan is all I'd be interested in. <clears throat> that's, that's it. I recommend requiring um, 10 high bush blueberry, or if you decide you want something else and someone recommends something else to you, but with those kind of soils, I think blueberries probably... The only thing that's going to grow out there, other than other white pines. Yeah. All set. All set. Motion. So. Uh, Heidi recommends pre and post construction inspections. That way, she'll meet out there with the tree person before you start. Sure. And then come to check it all out once you're done. Sure. So this is this is an idea. So I assume you're looking for a negative, negative number ne three. You want a negative three? Okay. So I'll move a negative three. Um, with a pre and post, and a planting plan. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's your name. So all set. So we'll write that up and you can either come pick it up or we'll send it to you by the end of the week. Cool. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. We have um, 242 2302 Turnpike Street. Request to continue to uh, February 24th. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. Uh, we're going to table the airport. Um, the next one is uh, 242 121 Mill Pond Townhouses. So, at the last meeting, um, you had asked for a phasing plan, which um, we did receive. Potentially in your packets. I'm not sure if Donna copied it for you, but, but Lou checked it out today. Um, I was kind of hoping this would. Oh, actually, I have a download of this. Hold on. Here we go. So you asked for the phasing plan, you asked for changes in erosion control, um, both of which are updated on this plan. Uh, there's one more thing. Um, I've also marked up a plan. up a plan with what I would propose for planting mitigation, which I'll show them, but um, I think generally speaking, if you want to present the changes, sure. just let me know what sheet you want. And again, uh, Andy Street with Civil Design Consultants. Um, as was uh, just mentioned, the, the changes that I took away with from last meeting was, was uh, the, the change from the, the silt fence and silt sock detail to, uh, to hay bale and silt fence line that's, that's been done and is on the, on the plans and the notes have been updated. Um, the, uh, there's a uh, wetland and located on driveway five, which is in the top left corner of this plan here that was not previously shown, that, it, that is shown now. The, um, the parking is uh, outside of that buffer zone. However, the, the infiltration trench that is proposed in that area is, is within it. Um, um, I, I believe this is still a, uh, I, I'm sorry, I take that back. There's a small amount of the new parking that isn't within that buffer zone as well as some of the infiltration trench. Um, that infiltration trench should be a net improvement even even without these uh, uh, parking spaces as a lot of that runoff today just goes right over land from the parking area into that uh, into that wetland and down down through the, to the river and things like that. Um, so, so that was added is now shown. Um, we also uh, Proposing some plantings that that we're, we're gonna we're going to continue to coordinate with the uh, the townhomes. They they do plan some uh, plantings throughout the development as part of this as part of this project, and uh, they they're certainly more than willing to work. They they were not able to piece together uh, a formal 
planting plan. However, they, they fully intend on complying with this commission and, and working with, with the commission's wishes on uh, the types of plantings and locations and things like that. Um, and then there was the, uh, the phasing plan was the, the last piece that, that was submitted as well. And the, the intent, the, the, uh, the townhomes, in addition to the commission's concerns, are, are concerned about phasing as well because what part of this project is to add parking and, and that for the very reason that there's not a lot of auxiliary parking with the development. So if the contractor were to rip up every driveway all at once, they would be in a tough spot for parking as well. So, so they would like to phase it, uh, doing one or two driveways at a time, bring them to a, uh, to a binder grade at a minimum to, to restore those, allow, allow their residents to return and safely use those areas and then move on. And uh, that would be the intent in these, in these uh, driveways that are in the resource areas as well. So I, I spelled out a, uh, a sample phasing plan. This will be confirmed at the pre-construction meeting and uh, once the contractor is on board. Um, but the intent is, is to, to do this in several sections to, to kind of to minimize the disturbance and not over, over tax any uh, uh, storage, storage areas that we've designated and allow for, uh, for minimal disruption throughout the, the project. Um, the phasing plan is also in the contract documents will be specific that uh, material that through the reclamation project uh, is, is hauled out that same day aside for some that may be needed for additional base course for walkways or for uh, to supplement poor soils that need to be over excavated in the uh, in the driveways themselves so those are that's a very brief synopsis of, of the changes that work to these plans um, I'm happy to answer questions as well so Jen and I went out there um, to a site review. Um, one of the parking areas that they were asking for was parallel parking to the uh, existing driveway. So it's like only a 10, so 10 or 12 foot width. Um, it's it's uh, on the, the bottom side away from the buffer zone. So that's almost little or no impact. Um, the other one is uh, two parking spaces uh, that, that was on another section and it was a catch basin right there so the water will be draining right into that catch basin so there's no impact to wetlands there and the other one is um, on Hockaway uh, off of Hockaway and they're going to put some uh, putting I forget what you want to put the, the drainage uh, the infiltration trenches the infiltra crushed stone trenches, yeah. infiltration yeah. trenches so actually they're going to and they're going to do some regrading to, to keep it away from the uh, brook uh, so that's definitely improvement. They're doing some planting enhancements in that area also. So uh, overall, I, I think they've um, done what they have to do. Is the parking spaces and little or no impact to this project. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It looks like this is our first chance to really review your phasing plan. It looks like you're just you're doing the very logical thing, but a difference spots around the site. Um, I think it's probably worth it for us to review that um, to identify um, times when the, of, of greatest impact for uh, resource areas. Um, how long how long from phase, from the beginning of phase one to the end of phase five uh, would you expect the what, what's the project schedule look like um, in terms of total construction duration uh, the, the intent would be uh, right around a month assuming we can get a quality contractor in there who's, who's committed to it um, I, that's what I would anticipate that they'll just keep moving right through it you know maybe maybe a week or so for each phase and uh, move on from there there are some conduits that'll be underground and things like that that it's a little extra work but uh, I, I would think a week for per phase would be would be reasonable so about a month or so and then one maybe two days at the end of kind of a final final paving day so are these underground conduits known you know and known pretty well in their locations the conduits are all shown here yeah they they're, they're what, what they really would like to do is be able to tie uh, electrical and irrigation from one side of the driveway to the other so they have lights along certain sides but not others so mm -hmm. just preparing for the future is, is sure. what they like to now's the time of course because it'll all be disturbed looks like a Looks like a nice facelift. No more questions. No questions. Will the electrical and irrigation 
require any excavation near wetlands that we haven't anticipated at this point? Uh, the, they're all within within um, the reclaimed areas. Yeah, okay. yeah. You know, uh, just a reminder: we, we talked about the um, that the subgrade when it's before paving. Yep. Are going to be certified the grades of what they are because yep. you know how tight they are. So we Absolutely. want to make sure before they're paid before we have an, uh, an issue. Right. And, and just for the rest of the commission's benefit, I mentioned this at the site walk too, but, but both my firm and, and the surveyors we, who were, uh, did the existing conditions have already been retained for construction services and will be on site. And, and one of the specific tasks that the, the townhomes wanted was that very thing, because they're concerned about grades as well, you know, outside of the commission's concerns, just making sure everything drains properly, because that's part of the problems they have now is that pavement's so bad and so flat that they have mm. ponding and, and, and puddles where they, where they shouldn't be. So. Okay. Right. Any more questions? Jen, is there still, is is the mitigation plan final? No, so can I, can I give that one of that to Andy? And um, so I have what I was thinking as well as um, a plant list, a potential plant list, we'll just yeah. shrubs. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so you take the, look at see if it's something sure. that if we conditioned it this way they would at least be um like would close. find it acceptable yep and yep. um i think i'm recommending that the commission keep the hearing open i draft the order of conditions for the next meeting but we're we haven't gotten dep comments and when they're right. where there's blsf and riverfront and all those sure. sorts of resource yep. areas i don't want to close and have them come back with something that i wasn't anticipating because sure. yep. that yep. would require us to reopen but it would also keep you on the same timeline of potentially getting an order in two weeks yep and i, I think uh with two weeks time i could certainly it'd be far easier to coordinate with the townhomes about okay. plantings so, and things like okay. that too yeah, okay. that being said we need a motion to continue oh i just to butters i don't know oh, we sorry, had a couple are, at the are last there butters one. here from milk pond so now we need a motion I move that we continue to uh, February 24th. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, that's unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, next one is uh, 242, no number yet. Lot one, Hillside Road. <clears throat> Did you print them copies of this? Okay, I guess this is. Did you just give us a butter notification card? I did by email. Do you want them? Oh, to get them no, if you gave them to me via email, yeah. I have. I already saved them. I just wrote. So this is a new proposal. You did you did see the ANRAD. There's a lot one and a lot two. Both will be presented this evening. Both are without DEP file numbers, as far as I'm I know. Um, so we're starting with lot one. Thanks. For the record, it's Mary Rimmer, Rimmer Environmental Consulting, and with me tonight is Brian Boyle, representing Winslow Drive Realty Group. Um, and as Jen said, that we had done a an ORAD for this uh, property that was then listed as 303 Chestnut Street back in uh, October. Um, that included both lot one and lot two. They were originally three separate lots. They've now been, um, they've been subdivided into two lots. And uh, the, the lot one contains the uh, original home at the corner of Hillside and Chestnut Street. And you can see underneath the, um, on your plan, the crosshatched area, underneath the uh, the gray the gray um, typeface that's underneath the color so um, we are proposing work entirely outside of the 25 foot no disturb and 50 foot no build zone 
Um, there is a correction on the plan. It was pointed out to me the trees that are shown here are actually trees to remain, not trees to be removed. It says trees to be removed on the plan, which was confusing to really me. Yeah, <laughs> he, it is meant to be uh, trees to remain. Um, a single family home, utilities, uh, driveway, all oriented as uh, best as possible to limit the amount of, of clearing that's required and intrusion into the, the uh, subzones. Um, pretty straightforward. Question I'm going to ask while well, we can talk about that is the uh, the, uh, the oh, like a possible uh, wall along the 25 um, that we that uh, I know the 25 is not possible because they're not clearing up to the 25. What I had recommended to them between the two lots was to follow the limit of clearing and then leave an opening where the path heads to the back of the property and then kind of continue over to the property line. Mm -hmm. They like a two foot loose boulder stone wall, nothing sort of, it doesn't have to be mortared or anything mm -hmm. like that. Although some people have done mortared ones, they've been quite impressive, but I mean, whatever is amenable. With a gap that sh where the existing paths are now? Right, to head back onto mm -hmm. the property. At the, at the um, just the, we can see a better limit of on the clearing nets. on the plan. Right. Does that sound okay for you, with you? A low stone wall to mark the, lim the permanent limit of clearing on the property. It's, it's pretty extensive. Um, I mean, it would be along the limit of clearing. It's hard to show without looking at the next plan. Um, Jenny, you're talking about a, like a row of, of small boulders or uh, the usual two, two foot by two foot uh, dry two laid two stone, foot wall. Foot stone wall and a dry set stone wall. Are there other options as well, just in, in case there? Something that will separate. So on lot two, it's it's much more of the 25 foot no disturb because the limit of clearing on lot two is pretty much the 25 foot no disturb for a lot of the property. But then I, I suggested leaving openings where you have access to the back of the property mm -hmm. or maybe even through that whole middle section because the 25 is nowhere. But so bringing it from lot one onto lot two, leaving a gap and then lot two to the property line. Okay. Nope, but it would be pretty much from the, this this, this section. Lot over here. Right. Um, so on this plan, the, the 25, pretty much you have openings here yep. and here. So I was talking from lot one across to here, leaving an opening, and then from here to the property line. I don't know what the, the square footage of or not a, not building a wall like a mortared wall, just a, just like loose boulders, boulders, loose stack boulders to d define yes. the limit of clearing. We, are, could, we have a cross section we can show you. We, we have a standard design. Could there be a, there could be could you use uh, right a shrub hedge or or cedar fence or anything like that? I think the vegetation's already pretty right. dense, but that doesn't stop people from creating their brush piles back there, from thinking they can clear farther back. Um, Post and rail has been, but that's not a preference of the commission because they degrade and people tend to not rebuild them. So, okay. I'm just trying to understand, it's my first time now, that is, is the goal, you, you're trying to keep the wetland delineated? Is that, what, what do you? The goal is to keep the homeowners out of the no disturb area, it, very, very simply. Okay. Um, we want to keep the homeowners and their activities out okay. of the no disturb zone, the no disturb area. And our, our experience has been that Nothing short of a stone wall will accomplish that mission. And we had one, one instance in my tenure where a stone wall was actually moved by the homeowner, and then we had to order it to be reconstructed. But as you know, folks do things in their yards, sure. and we want the no disturb area to be sacred. We don't so want it. So, again, so we need a permanent. You can walk back there. You can use it, but yeah. just not. So it, so needs to, it needs to be. It needs to be. rocks. So in, 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 if you can walk through this stone wall, I'm just trying to. 
picture this whole thing. So if there's boulders. Pic picture, a, picture a dry set stone wall, yep. typical New England, New England wall. agricultural yeah, like stone wall. Right along yeah, two, the two feet, yeah. two feet by two feet. Okay. It, it, we want it to, you know, the aesthetics won't hurt you. With the breaks where the path's at, as you're saying. Right. I get you. Okay. I guess it becomes just a little less defined on lot one because the, the limit of clearing is between the 50 and the 25. Typically, they're at the 25. So could he could still lay the, the stone at the 25 line there? Well, on this one, I guess the other option, since the limit of clearing then comes out to the 50, would be just to run it across the back of the lot and not continue along, bring it up to the 50, and then carry it onto the other lot where it goes back onto the 25. I guess that's the, the part that becomes the limit of clearing moves. You can see it here from from somewhere in between the 50 and the 25, out to the 50, back into the 25 again. Right. So where it occurs, where the limit of clearing is at the 50, are you proposing not to have stone wall in the, that location or, or just some signage or something? Um, I don't know. That's up to the commission, but there sometimes just a contiguous stone wall looks a lot nicer than there something. There would have that to be some kind of a, a natural obstacle to, to cause us to, to stop it. Um, I don't know, I'm not aware of one there. Um, are you? Okay. So what you're saying, right? <coughs> the tree line is, is the 25 is inside the tree line, John? Right. This is the, yeah, this is the tree yeah. line. Yeah. Okay. Right. The trees could actually be farther back than where the edge of vegetation is showing. So that you could actually put a wall farther back. Mm -hmm. That there, I, I don't remember that like. Was like, open there, like yeah. Things, so. Right. Yeah, it looks like. Uh, it's also something we could meet on site and discuss. On this lot one, it looks like the closest point of clearing is about 40 feet. Um, a wetland that would be on the Chestnut Street side of, on the left of that plan there. Um, I, I would suggest, I mean, just consider by the commission monumenting that tree line, um, you know, with markers on the trees and um, requiring the, um, you know, the stone wall barrier where it is, where it is more Critical and closer to the uh, the no disturb zone on on uh, lot number two. So I mean that's just another option for us to consider. Uh, no, I agree with Jack. So that's the only question that I have. So we're talking about placarding lot one up until the uh, the property line where it ties into two. Ooh. Yes. Field needs to be taken a look at. I don't know. How do you feel, Jen? I mean, well, we're not closing until yeah. the next meeting, so we, so we don't have there because we don't have a file number. See sure, what makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. Any other questions? No. Uh, okay. We need a vote. Uh, motion to continue. Well, I'll just make sure. I, I mean, there might be. A I'm sorry. Any budgets for this project? Along the trees, just inside the tree line, where you're. Yes, but it's it's up from the. Yeah. It's above the. So, so the idea of the the idea of the stone wall is to is to protect the resource area from the new residents. Um, you know, people people buy houses and sell them. And there might be two, three, four different families living in there over a period of time. So the continuity of what's a no disturb zone gets lost. But when you have a permanent barrier like a stone wall, it's not lost at all. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to do. That's the goal. We're just trying to discuss and trying to do, the, do it the best way. Any other 
questions or about us? No. Okay, motion to continue. To continue. Yeah, so moved. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. There's more, more questions. Other questions? Mr. Uh, Boyle. So I think on maybe on lot one, and Mary and I can look at it, but lot one potentially being a post and rail fence and just markers, and lot two where we're much closer considering the stone wall. we got to look at it. If you're yeah. Because okay. post and rail fences aren't worth the powder. The, the, a 12-year-old can take them down with a hammer in, in an hour. Stone wall can be a farmer's wall. Well, it's, it's difficult it to move to a stone. It doesn't have to be a mortared wall. You, you would have to, you would be... It would be a challenge to move a stone wall. It's nothing to move a post and rail fence. Yes, thank you. And, and that's what we don't want. And we've experimented with post and rail fence. Plus, their, their useful lifetime is about five years. They just don't last. So uh, I personally am, am negative on post and rail fences. Um, so open to discussion, but well, history is a good teacher. I, th I think uh, lot one, there'll be some wiggle room in lot one. But lot two we'll talk about right now, so we'll just continue this one. We have a motion. I move that we continue to um, February 24th. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The next name is in one abstention, correct? Sure. All but right. Continue so I <laughs> All right. Can't All right, the next one is 242 lot two, Hillside Road. So we've already looked at lot two. Um, for a moment, but um, it's pretty much the, the same, although we have a, lot two was revised. Initially there was some work proposed in the, uh, I never know what, here we go. This is not my usual format here, so sorry for the, there are, um, are a lot more resource areas clearly on, on lot two and a lot more land area. Um, and some of the clearing is right up to the 25 foot no disturb zone clearing and grading. Um, one of the things we didn't note on the last plan that I had mentioned to them is um, there are no appurtenances shown on the plans, no decks, no um, air conditioning units, no bulkheads. I think that well, footprint includes includes yeah, decks. Those 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 plans include decks. Okay. No. Sometimes they're shown more as a gray outline rather than as in permanent foundation yep. footprint. So if they're in here, that's great. I just wanted to make sure because. Okay. You'd be surprised. People want to bury propane tanks. They're much farther away from the house than you than some of the other. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure whatever you're proposing, it saves you from coming back and paying a fee and doing modifications later. So whatever you anticipate being out there, even if you put it on the plan and somewhat um, our chairman will often approve administrative modifications if you move something from one portion of the house to the other, but just sort of anticipating what you might need. Um, a couple other things I didn't see on the plan, dewatering. Um, to dewater the foundations when you're during construction um, and foundation drains. Um, there may be a note on the detail mm -hmm. sheets. The I didn't foundation. see one. But I can um, check with that about that, the engineer. Because we did have um, drip trenches for the roof. That's that's their sort of mitigation for roof drainage is mm -hmm. um, drip trench and there is a detail on the plan. There's a stockpiling note on the plan. Construction entrances are on the plan. So a lot of the information you're usually looking for is there. Those were the things I noted were not. Do you want something beyond a drip trench? Is that what you're saying for the roof runoff? No, no. I was just saying that's okay. on the plan, but okay. dewatering was something I didn't just see. Just dewatering, yeah. I don't, I don't think you're going to need that. So this is the wrong, I have the wrong one up here, because this is the one that shows the silt fence going back into the 25, and you have submitted a plan that clearly shows it's not going to be back there. Is that different than the plan we have right here? You have the updated plan that shows that the erosion control will not dip into the 25. Okay. Um, when you're ready, I'd like to talk about erosion controls for this lot. Sure. What is the plan? What are you planning so to use for erosion controls on lot The plan two? shows uh, straw wattles. 
um, the details are, are straw waddles. If there's, if there's another um, other method that would be preferable, we'd well, be happy to discuss that. Right now, they're, it's fairly flat, and they're overlapping. The, the waddles are overlapping. Well, I'm looking um, at a, I'm looking at a four, four foot drop. Mm -hmm. With the new grading, right? And so you're gonna, with the new grading, there's gonna be a substantial disturbance, uh, mm -hmm. right along, right, right around, and right along the edge. Uh, there is the potential for soil migration there. Sure. And um, it, sometimes we also stack the wattles if the, if it looks like mm -hmm. it's you, you're gonna need so more the, than a the, the wattles are about eight or ten inches. Ten 12. inches, yeah. We we require twelve. You use always. it twelve. Do they 12 make a twelve and twelve? They Actually, make a twelve. And we I would suggest on this site since there are not a lot of invasives that if it's not the, the if you're not happy with the water we back the water with silt fence in well, areas of well, slope. Find find a way to make me happy because uh, this resource area is 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 something that needs protection during construction. So if soil starts moving, there's got to be some type of a, a dam to stop it. Um, I understand Jen doesn't want invasives, so she's opposed to hay bales. I, I get that. But I want something that would be as substantial as a hay bale. Um, Yep. Without without pu putting invasives in there, so sure. find a way to make walls, me happy. Yep, the walls work pretty well if they're appropriately sized and yep. stacked if they need to be, because you need to have that height. Yep. But they have usually have pretty good contact with the soil. They last a long time because they're in that encased in a mesh. Mm -hmm. You don't deal with the, you know, the, the mulch shocks that are blown in. Um, it often leave a mass behind when you have to take the the um, sock out. These are pretty easy to move move in and out and yeah. leave less of a footprint than a than hay bales do when you when you no, take I'm them familiar out. with the waddles. I'm, I'm okay. absolutely familiar with them. My problem is the, the size. Right. They can be overwhelmed by soil. Mm -hmm. A hay bale on its edge is two feet high. Yep. A waddle on its edge is maybe six or eight inches. So in those areas where there's steep slopes, we can certainly um, add uh, siltation fence behind it. Entrenched You're gonna, behind. Put a fence in, and entrench it, and put put the wall. Put the walls up, in front of it, upgrade it. Up, upgrade it mm -hmm. with the wall and the fence as the last resort, mm -hmm. uh, buried in. Sure. I'd be happy with that. Yeah, I'd have no problem with that. I'll say. I'll say. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think this is definitely a more appropriate lot for. Uh, that stone wall that we we talked about in, mm -hmm. in lot one, um, and Doug had actually mentioned, and it didn't sink in till now about a farmer's wall. And I think what you meant, Doug, was you know these old style New England walls that are not not stonemason built walls. They're um, about two by two, but they're just you know they're they're stacked um, stacked rocks, you know, in, in a row uh, that I think they look pretty good and it looked pretty natural, pretty rustic. Um, I think you could do that. I think you, you definitely need to do at least that on this lot number two. And to be honest with you, it, it probably would look pretty good if it went, uh, you know, at the edge of vegetation on lot one as well. So um, I'd, I'd ask you to consider that. Uh, no more questions. But uh, just at the uh, by the house or all the way down to the end of the lot? Because those are the two mm -hmm. just point seven acre lot, so it's quite a long way. There's nothing proposed. You said the edge of vegetation. Yeah. Edge of <coughs> edge of clearing. Over by the car, so it would Okay. Hard. Just wrap it back around to yeah, towards the driveway. Yeah, at the, the edge of clearing is what we're talking about. Okay, that'll save a lot of distance. Yeah, I'd just like to echo Jack's thoughts. I think the way that it's set up with the current area of clearing and where the vegetation starts seems like the perfect area for a, a stone wall. Whoever purchases this house is going to be very tempted to where it finally flattens out a little bit to use that area of the lawn and expand it. And if you got that stone wall there and markers behind it, um, they shouldn't use it and they'll certainly be put on warning about it. So, those are my only thoughts. Uh, no further comments. If there way, I, uh, Mary, I, I just have to tell you, I, I agree with yeah. Sean. The, the, I, I consider this this lot, I think, is a little more sensitive than lot one is. I think you'd probably agree. 
uh, just on the science alone of what you have here. And that no disturb zone, I, I think, is critical prior, prior, to the, prior to the wetland markers and prior to the pond. There's um, a fair amount of area that's currently mowed right now that's not technically lawn, but there are paths, wide paths through there. Yeah. I'm assuming that's okay to continue that use? Not, not saying that. Okay. Um, I'm not saying anything's okay. Um, I would say accessing the back of the property on the current maintained paths is, is fine. Accessing where? It accesses the pond. So we don't see that, though. You That's, don't, we don't we see don't, that. We here. haven't. The clearing is, is shown to, um, to break, break here, and there's a path that kind of runs up and through here. It's not, you know, seriously maintained. It's just maintained for access. How wide is it? Yeah. It's a man -made I understand, pond. but this is what happens when you come in front of us with a new project. We get to impose the current rules yeah. that exist. I understand it's been there a long time. I get it. We're not talking about skating. Well, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about access. We're talking about how much access will be, be granted to get through. So they'd, they'd still be able to walk down there and use their land, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, walking down and using the land is permitted. What What is there in terms of, like, for example, if somebody thought they were going to put pavers down and make a nice uh, runway down to the pond, probably not. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking about. Well, I, I thought you were talking about prohibiting use an island or whatever. We haven't gotten to that word yet. So, so my, my my opinion, most respectfully, is I, I want to see the uh, the boundary. I understand if you want to have, maintain and continue the access point, I want to see that. I want to okay. see how much you're talking about. Um, mowing a 20-foot wide piece down there might not be necessary. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we got to see. Yeah, because there, there, it's been there are a lot of uh, well, you might you all may know the property, but mm -hmm. a lot of um, specimen trees. And so it's been it's, the walking paths through the area. It's been it's been gardened, yep. so it's not all very. Um, a lot of it isn't necessarily native, but it, it's beautiful. It's got a, a lot of variety of trees that you don't see very often around here. Um, but it's it's not a, a a good part of it is not really a very native landscape. So what will come in, it, a lot of what is going to expand if you just continue the mowing is that ivy that's not native and some of the other things that have been planted as ground cover so we might have some photos that we can provide yeah I, I'd like to see some kind of a plan what you propose sure yeah I think that that would be, make more sense mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with the property I know mm -hmm. the area mm -hmm. and I, I'd like to see a plan of what it is you're talking about We'll look for the wall. This particular sure, we can show. Part. We'll show the wall on the on the revised plan before the next meeting. Okay. But that's I see, Lou. They're talking about this. Uh, main, this is this appears to be the existing area that, that Mary's talking about here. Yeah, I mean. So. I agree. Twenty foot's a little excessive for a walk but, path to get to the. Uh, but we want to. We do want to leave some kind of access. I want to see what they got for access right now. So. Well, I think probably part of what's going to come up is um, the A series line around the pond. The the wetland is actually some of it is mowed so right. I don't necessarily recommend that there be a 25 foot no disturbance zone but probably at least that the vegetation out there maybe only be mowed annually or something like that it's not it's not a good time of year to go for a site visit but if, if you saw it, it it's you know it's something that's maintained and not inappropriately so there's no heavy use around it or anything like that but if they're going to continue to use the pond recreationally, my understanding is it used to be stocked with fish and people would fish there. Um, but at least the, the BVW should probably be monumented. There, was, there were fish in there. I don't know if anybody was ever allowed to go well, catch they, them. They found, they we found did. fish. We did. We baited no, them. I know, did, I know yeah. there's fish. There always were fish in there, but I don't know if uh, Mr. Busby ever allowed anybody to go in and catch them. Oh, uh, well, I know he I did when he was a kid. if you went in to catch them, you were probably trespassing. Yeah. But uh, I know there were fish in there. But... Uh, I know. Hey, my my, con my concern is always going to be the same. It's, sure. it's, the, it's yeah. the area around the pond, the right. resource area, the, the recharge area. It's, it's been more or less a meadow. It was a fruit tree, I think, so it's like you know, it, there's quite a bit.
bit of open area that isn't forested. Um, so, the so the management of that. This, low. yeah, it's, 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 it's not all there. the way around. So the bank of the pond is actually, you know, the wetland line really yeah. is. It's, 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 you know, one of those lines comes out off the Yeah, the bank of the pond as well comes out clearly. Mm -hmm. um, Mary, if you had. A lot of this area is, Notice of intent? I don't think I did. Some of the flags were out in the grass. I yeah. just remember. They were. Let's say for the sake of discussion that you had what, what you might consider to be an open meadow or a wet meadow. Mm -hmm. and, and let's say in part of that discussion you determined that you had some type of nesting species there that, that requires an open wet meadow. That would, be, that would be a cause that you could champion to keep that mode on, a, on an annualized basis, which is a policy that this commission mm -hmm. has. We have an open meadow nesting species policy that we allow sure. uh, wet meadows to be maintained in right. that state, but there has to be a reason for it. It can't be because somebody wants to go play sure. hockey on a pond. Right. right. So, Understood. I mean, it's not I, big I enough to be a be bird nesting habitat. It's not, it's, you need five, five acres for that. It's not going to be a, what, a grassland nesting bird habitat particularly, but it does have some value as, as open meadow. Well, I guess I want to hear next that. Next to the I, pond I wanna... and next to the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the woodland there, so. I mean, personally speaking, from my perspective, our charge is to protect um, certain right. areas by by the regulations, and that's 25 feet, no disturb. Sure. And unless there's some override, overriding reason for us to vary from that, just the fact that it's happened in the past and now it's being developed, certainly it's something to take into consideration, but it, I don't think it means that we ignore the, the setbacks that we have. Yeah, no. But if there's something exceptional, like uh, Al was mentioning, then that certainly is something I mean, to, yeah. might discover to consider. You've got bobblings out there or something. Uh, yeah. If you do. Uh, not, not on that side, I don't think. But I understand what you're saying. I, I think I'm I have some photographs of that area that might be helpful for you to see. We're looking for a way to help you. Mm -hmm. um, so you're mm -hmm. going to have to help us. Okay. All right. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. We need to continue. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, two four two eleven sixty nine COC request for twenty three fifty seven Turnpike Street request to continue to two twenty four. Which one is that, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Massetti. So moved. The Meadows. So, so moved. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. And two four two fourteen forty seven uh, COC request yeah. for twenty three fifty seven yeah. Turnpike yeah. request to continue to uh, February twenty fourth. So moved. Is everybody in the middle? Yeah. Yeah. We have a second. Request to continue. I need a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Next one is uh, 242 1620 COC request for 179 Osgood Street. Um, we can move on to the airport, actually. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Oh, this this isn't easy. Let's get it done. Yeah, no, one, no one's here for that. So. All right. You want to just do the number of the airport. So the last time color. we saw this project, we had asked for peer review of the stream relocation and the engineering around that. Um, you have since seen the peer review and the response to comments, and we have both. Um, okay. Oh yeah, Paul, Mr. Manziel, chair, right? Don, Louis is going to recuse. Okay, just want to make sure you had it on the. And um, so Mr. Mandy will be chairing. So we have the peer reviewer, um, Scott Morrison, here this evening, as okay. well as the uh, applicant represented by Randy Christensen. Okay. Randy? Good oh, evening, I everybody. Good. How are you doing? I um, want to give a real brief history, catch everyone up to date as to where we've been, uh, where we went, and uh, what we're going to do here tonight. And I'm basically setting up the uh, talk that our th or your third party review consultant uh, will be providing as to what they reviewed and, and what their findings were. Um, notice of intent in the first hearing was on November 19th, uh, 2015. Um, we actually had our second hearing on December 16th, uh, at which time we did continue uh, for the purpose of uh, identifying, financing, et cetera, that third, part, that th third party peer review um, of the notice of intent. 
Um, site visits on this were conducted with uh, your agent on uh, December 11th and with your agent and the third party review consultant on January 7th. Furthermore, a uh, comprehensive office meeting between all those parties was also held January 19th. And I'm just trying to dictate to you uh, some of the effort that's gone in between the last time we saw you on, uh, on December 16th. There has been quite a bit of activity behind the scenes uh, in getting to where we are today. The coordination with the review consultant and your staff uh, resulted in uh, several bits of additional information and several plan changes. And what I wanted to do was identify those major areas where the plans have changed and or additional information has been provided since the original notice of intent submission. First of all, uh, the third party review was focused on the runway five end, where as if you remember, the stream relocation alternative, which was being uh, championed uh, by the applicant, uh, was subject to the review of, of both uh, Ecotech and uh, Graves Engineering. And that was an approximate 617 foot stream relocation around the present 550 foot length of stream that we would uh, be rerouting around the end of our safety area. And in their review, major uh, items uh, that were identified and uh, uh, included the following. During construction, which we hope to start in 2016, we anticipate a closure period for the winter between the end of 2016 and start of 2017. Uh, we did have some mention in the notice of intent of the interim shutdown period, um, but the plan information was lax as well as the detail. And so one of the major plans that was uh, added to the NOI plan set was this plan sheet 301A. And it is actually called the interim shutdown period uh, plan at the runway five end. It shows where we anticipate having the fill elevation to before we shut down and all the stormwater controls that will go into uh, shutting it down properly, monitoring it during the shutdown and then reopening it. And the major item of this interim shutdown period that was not a part of our original notice of intent plans was you will see and I don't know if you can find 301A. That was 301. So okay, yeah, it was the one right after it. If uh, And I have the paper copy available. No, if, uh, don't see. This proves to be difficult. I have 301A here. You do right there. So you will see on plan sheet 301A that's in your packets, um, there is a 30-inch bypass culvert that we have now added to the plans. The purpose of this bypass culvert, which goes right next to the now filled existing stream channel is that we can put flows and bypass flows around our construction area, get the water, separate the water from construction, not only during the construction of the safety area and the relocated stream, but also to allow that whole area to grow up, let the seed take for a couple growing seasons, let it establish before we actually introduce the flow back to this system. And so it's a significant event putting it in, significant expense but it provides a lot of constructability improvements for this project, adding that 30 inch culvert, which will be abandoned in place uh, once it's all done. Uh, the review consultants uh, have a bit more to say on that matter, but one of the other important aspects of the bypass culvert is if we elect after a growing season or two to put water finally in our relocated stream, and there is a significant storm forecasted, we actually have the flexibility to reuse that culvert and maybe give it a more, bit more extra time if we think it's needed. So it offers a lot more flexibility to the plan than we originally had uh, putting a bypass culvert in there. In addition, as you will see on this plan 301A, uh, it provides for a minimization of the exposed area and a numerous stormwater BMP treatment train between water falling on the exposed fill and actually entering into our bypass culvert. And so we have graded it such that we allow it to, uh, to be treated several times uh, before it is actually released. Finally, and, and it was a late bottom of the ninth inning addition, um, we are going to uh, put temporary seating 
and actually temporary spray mulch via hydro seeding over the entire disturbed area during the interim shutdown period. It was going to be compacted gravel. We didn't know if that extra step was necessary, but in speaking with the peer review team, uh, became evident that it was something that was going to uh, improve water quality. Uh, pretty short money on our end, so uh, we added it in there. So this whole sheet 301A is an important erosion control and stormwater management step that was really not a part of the original notice of intent filing and was a result of the third party uh, coordination. In addition to the interim plan, interim shutdown plan, uh, numerous details were added to the relocated stream. Uh, one thing and one comment was that the grading of the stream was in a lot of fill. It was actually offset pretty high off of the virgin ground that was out there. And so we looked at ways of reducing the height of the fill that the relocated stream was actually in and were successful in doing so. We better identified the structural components of the relocated stream as far as gravel specifications and the compaction requirements for those gravel, those various layers of gravel. And we provided details for things like stream boulders that would be added to the bottom, um, details for some of the plantings that were going to take place along the relocated stream. And those are the major uh, items that were considered. So in addition to the re relocated stream details and that interim shutdown plan, uh, a lot of stormwater management uh, uh, comments were made by Graves Engineering, which was their engineering uh, subconsultant. And there were a lot of them, but they were mainly about changing cover types, changing soil uh, class types, things of that nature. Uh, looking at watershed boundaries a little bit more closely to see what the contributing watersheds were for the subwatersheds, and we let the stormwater folks talk to the stormwater folks on those. And I do believe they've worked those all out, but you do not have the final review of our revised stormwater plan from your peer review consultant yet. He was not able to finish that for tonight once we got the information back to him. So that is one thing that is outstanding, but I do anticipate a positive response uh, from him since, again, the comments were many, but there were many minor comments as opposed to any smoking gun out there. What I'd like to do in identifying what the major components or major changes in the NOI were is hand it over to Scott, let him talk about his methodology and in the review, what we went through, and uh, I guess uh, his comments on, on where the plan set stands uh, at the present time. So Scott, I'll turn it over to you. Just for the record, Scott Morrison from Ecotech, who is obviously the peer review consultant to review this project. Um, just to kind of step back a couple steps beyond where we are today, I'm sure you've got a copy of my uh, peer review letter. Essentially, that I was commissioned um, by the board to go out, look at the alternatives. I've reviewed the alternatives. Um, I think the only two real viable alternatives is the current proposal. Um, the other one we looked at was um, putting in a box culvert and I think this mimics the existing conditions much better than a box culvert would ever ever do just simply because of the length of a box culvert you wouldn't get any vegetation to grow in the middle of it so I agree that this is the preferred alternative I also reviewed the wildlife habitat evaluation and agree with their assessment um, I confirmed bylaw compliance because obviously you've got to issue a waiver um, to do that We've looked at the alternatives analysis, and then the other um, requirement is to increase the natural capacity of the, the brook. Um, in doing so, they're removing substantial amounts of, of pavement, removing invasive species, and then replanting and stabilizing that brook better than it is currently. There's some undercuts and some erosion. Um, so I believe they've addressed that for bylaw compliance. And then I also looked at the Wetlands Protection Act do they comply with the performance standards for bank impacts, um, such as physical stability of the bank, water carrying capacity of the bank, groundwater, surface water quality, habitat for fisheries, and important habitat features. Um, one of the habitat features that was added to the plan um, was some additional stones along that stream channel, and then again the, uh, the replanting, so they've addressed that as well. and then. As, as indicated, 
most of the, the comments, I guess the big comments and the big changes are essentially this plan um, where we've gone through to make sure that it's, it's, you, you're able to construct it. Um, prior to having a diversion culvert, there was no, no method to transport water um, through the area while it was under construction. So we really looked at that, really looked at the erosion controls that they've got in place. I think Stantec did a nice job coming up with an interim plan so that the contractor, when they start out there, can really know exactly this is what we need to do and this is where it's stabilized during the winter months and then they can come back and continue. So there's a great deal of detail that I won't bore the commission with. Um, and then finally, they've provided some additional responses. Um, I expect to get Graves engineering comments back within within the week I would say and then I'll just summarize those and provide a, a final report to the Commission. I'd be happy to answer questions if the Commission has specific questions. I'd like to begin. Uh, thank you. First of all I want to thank you for your review and uh, I thank you for the job you did on behalf of this Commission. Um, I have uh, sheet 301A which I guess is was the amended sheet that's the big that's correct that's the big deal sheet with regard to this yep. is are there any any issues on 301A that are reflected in this letter that are not agreed upon or not addressed? Is there anything outstanding either 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 you or Randy are aware of? I'm not uh, aware of any. So so we should consider 301A to be a an agreement in how to construct correct how to do the job. Mm -hmm. we, we and, and just for the record, David Rich, the design yep. engineer, is with us here tonight yep. as well. So I just wanted to, as, as I as I try to in my head process the information. I just want to. I want to find if, if there are any sticking points anywhere. In, or I, I don't have any sticking points, and I think it's just a matter of having the review engineer review all the material to make sure that they've addressed all the corrections. Uh, and um, then I guess this probably is more for Jen or, or Randy than the, the Stantec letter. Is everything? I noticed some of the items in here uh, are marked as agreed, and some are marked as outstanding. The outstanding items. Does that mean you're working on them, or, or, or do, do we have a stalemate? There were no stalemates. Um, can you identify one that remains? Oh. I'm seeing some that just say outstanding versus. Oh, outstanding item uh, number? If, if you don't you mind, mean? I can explain the outstanding word. Yeah. I tried to summarize since we had comments from Ecotech and Graves. Okay. With a different numbering system in, in the review letter. All right. I called the item as identified in the peer review as just outstanding item number one. Okay. Each of the outstanding items have been addressed. Not meaning that it, it remains to be Correct. discussed. Oh, okay, all right. I, I took Correct. outstanding to mean it. Sorry. That's all right. No. That's, that's, that's why I asked. I'm good. Well, there, right. were, there were a good number of hydrological changes, yeah. cover mm -hmm. types and things that changed numbers and things you would enter into the program to make it spit out information. Okay. Um, they have made those changes, but what they were saying was Graves um, started reviewing those this okay. week, so that they were not able to finish that for tonight. So Graves got an initial bite of the apple. Yeah. We responded with a new report. Yeah. We all thought that Graves should have a second bite at what we changed. Okay. So it's that second bite that they're going for yeah. right now. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, yeah. Mr. Maven, I'm sorry, Mr. Maven. You're not here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lou's not here. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Yeah, I, I think, um, Randy, you talked about some changes earlier in your presentation about um, mitigation. Well, things that would minimize risk during construction, the 30-inch culvert, the um, uh, phasing plan of get your plantings established, and it, it, all, it all sounded good. Um, and I think it was it was a good effort to, to do that to take the time to um, to make sure that we're covering all the contingencies so that we minimize risk on the project um, I do have one question about the the permanent uh, impact of the um, of the proposed modified location of the stream and um, you know you've got some bends on that stream it looks kind of symmetric and there are a couple of pretty decent bends um, you know 
what can you do if, if one of those things break through or erode or I think, you know, I mean, I, I read in some of the materials that, that this stream bed is constructed primarily on fill. So if we hit a pocket of material that could go unstable, what do we do? What, let's understand that now before we um, yeah, I think that's what Graves came out with right away that we didn't have in the notice of intent the exact description of what this was being built in. And we wanted to get away from uh, some vision that we were dumping a lot of unprocessed fill out there, carving a channel into it, giving it some rudimentary compaction, and entering water into it. So part of this review, Graves certainly, before they put their stamp on it, wanted a lot more detail. And we actually started developing or providing them with the actual gravel specifications of the layers that would actually be in there. So when you look at the cross sections of the stream now, the details that are now in this plan set, you're gonna see P209 gravel with an associated specification with it. Not only its gradation specification, but also the compaction specifications. And then not only P209 is our really high-end gravel that's right underneath the channel itself, but even the layers underneath that, the P152, now has a very detailed specification that's gonna carry over to the bid package. And it carries over the bid package, so it's not going to require uh, the geotechnical guys to provide uh, compaction testing. We're requiring, I think it was 95 to 100 percent, but 95 percent compaction on those layers. So before, if you were to look at the plans, as Graves and, e Graves and Ecotech did, found efficiencies in the amount of information there to give them that comfort level that we weren't just building it in common fill. We've now changed the cross sections and provided these specifications to show them that the material is actually processed and it's going to be put in in a certain amount of lifts and compacted um, and then all the erosion control materials going over it. Then the two growing seasons of stabilization before we put water into it is going to help as well. More importantly, and I think one thing that Ecotech came across with, and it was a little bit of an arguing point. We had originally thought we were going to put flowable fill back into that temporary bypass culvert. And that still was probably an item for discussion. But in the short term, now, I think we're just going to plug the inlet end. So if anything like you said might happen, catastrophic hurricane, whatever, we have the ability to bypass water again with just taking the plug out of the inlet side of that culvert and again, have a fairly good dry construction site with which to make repairs. I'm not saying that's going to happen, and I'm saying that the engineering has gone into this to prevent, prevent that from happening, but what a nice safeguard to have should something happen. That safeguard in place permanently. And that's... And so that it's <laughs> yeah. always there. And, and, and to your point, too, is my first concern was how are you going to compact this to make sure that you don't have infiltration and having to blow out that side, which that was my one of my primary concerns. And then they've provided some detailed specs um, for compaction and then details for the that base material. And actually through the process, they've actually kind of lowered that to some extent too to try and get it in cuts where they can as opposed to being in fill. So we had a constant gradient on the stream and to provide that constant gradient from the start of the rest of the relocation to the end of the relocation, we had it pretty high up in the profile, which meant it was almost all in fill. Comments mainly from Graves mm -hmm. about that possible breakout. We tried to lower it back down in the landscape, so we provided an initial steeper section followed by a long run section. By doing that, we met the existing contours out there a lot better. Now we have two sections of it that are actually in cut sections, in virgin ground and then the rest is in fill, but a lot lower fill than the original plan. So their, their testimony and coordination re resulted in a lot less of the channel being, being developed in a fill profile. Some of it's actually in the cut now because of their direct input on the project. So things have gone into it. Um, there's always things that can happen, but uh, a lot more detail is in there now with a lot more structural fill as opposed to common fill. Um, that uh, at least provided a comfort level of peer review consultants that uh, has a high success rate. If this thing's going to fail, typically it's going to be, you know, we, we have our 25 year storm events. It seems like every two year, at least a frequency of storm events, it seems like 25 year storm happens every couple of years now. We're going to find out in the first two growing seasons while we're still getting root mass in there and everything like that. 
that's typically when you're going to see failure. So this bypass system is still going to be there. It's a matter of putting sandbags in place and all of a sudden the water's out of your way and you have a nice, clean, dry work area with which to repair if it's necessary. So we're kind of covering both our bases. Uh, good, good engineered process fill material with good compaction, but a plan B should something happen. I think it's valuable to have that plan B, uh, and I think it's uh, going to be a Time well, I think it was time well spent to put this extra engineering into it to, to give it the best shot we can, and I know we're still doing that. Um, but, um, I mean, anecdotally, when you look at streams and rivers and anywhere in the world, they don't look like what you've shown here. They're, they snake along, they turn, they turn back. I expect something like that to happen. You, you, it just is the natural course of things. You know, the, you can do the best you can, but um, things tend to, to give a little bit. So I think it's a good to have that contingency in place. I think it's good that you, that you put your additional engineering into it. I wouldn't stop now. I'd, I'd continue to you know, do the best you can on the trouble spots that you identify even from this point on um, to minimize anything that, that goes wrong after construction. One additional item. Veins, which were not there before, but our boulder placement is going to make directional veins on both those turns. What that does is it keeps the high velocity close away from your actual outside corner. So naturally, that's where your scour points are going to be on the turns you just identified. Um, we have a series of rock veins along each one of those outside corners. And so our boulder placement is not haphazard. We have it in such a way to try to get away some of that erosive force that you would see during high flows. And again, that was direct coordination. That was Jennifer's input, and then Scott and I going back and forth and trying to identify uh, how we can use those boulders to the best of our ability, not only for habitat, but this flow reduction as well as erosive force reduction. So that's something else that's new as well, is that, that boulder specification. And that boulder stationing is on one of the plan sets now, uh, showing where we're putting those rock banks. So, so some more thought went into it, even, even above and beyond what we thought about. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for the the grave stuff to come in. Um, you had wanted to see some sort of flattening out of that ridge before. Um, oh yeah, that did, was. Did that grading come into this plan? Right that that's it. Okay. Essentially, what we've done is what I recommended is instead of opening up that whole hillside as a first phase, to leave this existing grass so that you've got during construction. A clean runoff flowing down the slope, dropping into this swale, and then going over and then dropping into the catch basin, which limits the amount of area that you've got washing through the work area so that you can contain your clean, clean water, reroute that, and then contain any dirty water on and pre treat that before discharge. So that was included in there. I like that idea. You know. I like it very much. Now, the area that you're proposing to leave uncut, do you know the soils that you're dealing with there at all? Do we have any idea what's under there? The uh, area that we're not filling? The well, the area that was just referred to as not to disturb it. Those are filled. That is right at the end yep. of the So that's all filled. That's, that's all filled. C, C, C group soils. Already anyway. So, yep. yeah, better not to expose that then. That, that yeah, that was something they both saw right in the first, that January 7th hearing. We yeah. were walking out there and they said, what can you do about that? And yeah. they came up with something. So. Yeah, so open it. Does work. No, hey, listen, cutting it open is a bad idea. Leave it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. And so those notes are now on there, and they become part of the bid set. And so phase one, uh, they don't go up that slope at all. Excellent. And there's an existing catch basin down the end of that. You can see. Yeah, right. Which will take the the drainage away. Although that catch basin was failed, or not the no, catch basin, a, the no, outlet. There was no rim. Oh, no rim. So there was a boulder on top of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're going to maybe a note to rehab that catch basin before we start sending flows we're to it. the rim off the one that's over here and put it on that one. They're the same kind of catch that. basin. There's a rock in it. I never knew that until no. we walked over there. Yeah, it's that. like a 200-pound boulder. In the catch basin. In it. Well, yeah. So the, that was done to prevent somebody from falling down in there. Well, I mean, that's no, exactly no, why that was no done. No to right? plan. <laughs> doesn't do much for a flow. But we we, we understand how that came to be, but... 
safety. Yeah, they're trying because yeah, somebody goes walking through there and falls in. Right. So better to put the boulder, right? Yep. It's the easy solution. Easy I solution, I know. <laughs> Maintenance. Yeah. It does say there is a note there and just no cover on catch base and rock over. Yeah. To be rehabbed. That is that that catch base listed on this uh, it's right. A, a yeah, plan? you can yeah. see I just highlighted it right. Yep. It's at the end on uh -huh. where am I looking? In here? It's oh you're we're on different plans now. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still um, on A. No? I am on Maybe covered with the grading. I am on Oh, this is three oh one A. Yeah. Yep. That's you're the work. That's you, the working you, plan. I'm on the right plan. You're on the. You're on the plan. It's just hard to see that small. It, it says uh, seal I existing did, pipe. I did print them out 11 by 17s despite. Oh, yeah, Is that the one? Okay. Yeah. All right. I got it. All right. Very good. Thank you, guys. That's the one being disabled. Yeah. The one that they're going to is right here. That's the one with the rock in it. Gotcha. Okay. I want to know where that rock is in case I go out there. <laughs> You'll be going with Randy. I'll walk with Randy. <laughs> yeah, I will. Put him in front of me. <laughs> you're gonna. I, I, amazing on site visits. How many people make me walk? You're gonna be right. You're gonna. You're the point dog, Randy. You're like always fishing. People make me walk. Yeah, put Randy out there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's safe for Randy. It's safe. It's safe. <laughs> um, that interim plan. Yeah. Probably the amount of work that went into this will save us that many headaches when we actually get to construction. So it's uh, it was well worth it. And just, I, I'm not sure if you're working with the same contractor, but they did do the runway expansion on the other two ends of the runway, and it's been flawless. So, we, this is a much bigger they'll, project. They'll on it. I don't know. They're going to be the same people, but it, it has gone really well. And that was a project that went, if you recall, right up to the wetland. Right. Um, well, you'll be conducting the oversight, right? That's that's essential, I think. Yeah. Uh, no questions. And I will ask, but are there any about us here? And uh, for the record, none answer. <laughs> uh, um, just so, so where there's are we some now? other um, DEP had comments, and this is not. Do you know what sheet that is? Yep. So the, the wetland replication area is constructed within an area that, unless you saw it, I don't even think you could begin to imagine what it looks like. Keep going. Um, Randy can maybe explain keep going. it. Keep going. Yep, keep going. Um, right there, that's yeah. it right there. 904, it's near the back. I think it's that 904. 901. 901. So this is an area... Um, I mean, there are mature trees going in it, so it is it is nothing new. There is a little new material out there, but it's hardly the, the issue. Um, this is filled wetland, and it's filled with massive amounts of asphalt, stone, rebar. Stuff poking out of the slope with 50-year-old trees growing on it. Right, you know, and with large trees. With rebar in it. And so they're proposing to remove a good portion of that fill. DEP's comment was they were basically creating a bowl with a rather constricted access. So um, when we were out there, it, it's really hard to envision what this might look like. Um, but they were proposing to remove a lot of fill, a lot of invasives. Um, and now they've agreed to widen the entrance. It's it's still an odd, going to well, be an orient odd. Orient me a little bit. Where is this site? Where is this dumping site? I'll let Randy. Um, Randy give you the I will point you to... Go I have I have the uh, 901 map in front of me, but you I'm might not. want to go to the top. So here's the overall airport. Yeah. Here's the runway 5M with the stream relocations taking place. Right, right. We call it the north ramp. It's all the way on okay. this section of the airport. All right, I know what you're talking about. So okay. up I got in there. you. So it's actually literally on the same side of the airport as the old dump. It is. Yeah. Okay. All right. And if I can build on what Jennifer just said, I when we first went out there, we get directed by both Army Corps of Engineers and DEP to minimize mature tree removal in wetland replication areas. In this grading scheme, the only place I had mature trees was on this, and it is a fill slope with all the rubble that Jennifer just talked about. Here's the wetland, here's my connection to the wetland, and here was the majority of the wetland creation site. Well, I had this only about 15 feet wide. 
the actual connection, trying to preserve as many of those mature trees as possible. DEP came back with that one comment, and so this is now about two and a half times as wide as it was before. We still tried to maintain the grading a little bit short of the wetland boundary to save as many of those mature trees as possible. But what it results in is a lot softer grades, a lot bigger connection to the existing wetland, a lot more fill removal uh, as well. Um, so as we chase bad fill, we may have to backfill with some good stuff and then obviously with some prepared topsoil on top of it. So we used to have about an 8,200 square foot wetland replication area. With the regrading and the new connection, it's up about 9,200 feet now. So there's about an extra 1,000 square feet of uh, mitigation site there than was proposed in the original notice of intent. So we don't have those steep grades around the connection anymore. They're back to three on one, a lot gentler. And we've added upland plantings to this plan uh, in addition to the suite of wetland shrub plantings we had in the basin bottom. So a regrading, a change in the planting schedule were the two big things that happened here, mainly to address the DEP comments on this NOI filing. The area that we're talking about, was this area ever subject to any part of your original uh, vegetation management plan? No, it was not. Um, should it be? It wasn't because, uh, again, looking at the airport plan itself, yep. here's the runway 14 end, here's the 14 end. So this is actually off to the side as opposed to in the approach of a runway. Yeah. So even mature trees were not of a height that they were impacting airspace over there. So, so, so we have, never had a problem over there. So that's not a VMP issue? No. No. Right. So. That's too bad. That would have solved it. Uh-oh. <laughs> I should have reserved my answer. Well, I'm just saying, you know, it's, 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 your, it's your area, um, but the VMP would give you a nice uh, five-year uh, plan, phasing plan, where you could really improve that area. Up to you if you want to talk about it. Well, this is 29,000 square feet. The limit of the side slope grading is more than a half acre of land, and then we have the 9,200 square feet of the basin bottom. So... This whole face, all these three on one grades that you see around the replication area are now all going to be planted as well. So you get a substantial, you get more than a half acre of buffer zone restoration with natives mm -hmm. and in addition that 9,200 square feet of actual wetland as well. Then one of the things we proposed from the beginning is 100 feet from this grade and going out into the existing wetland, mm -hmm. we're doing uh, two seasons worth of invasives control, cut and dab with a buckthorn that's out there. That's mainly to make my job easier of doing the five years of monitoring on this thing. Try to get those big seed buckthorns pushed back as far as I can. So we want to do some invasives clearing in that existing wetland just to facilitate getting this thing a, a good head start. They're also clearing the gray area. It's additional fill material they're going to take yes, out yeah, and yeah. they're going to fence the area off so no one will be dumping there anymore. It, there's access from where? How do they get access this in there? This right here, uh, we have what's called the North Ramp Road. It comes mm -hmm. in from the incinerator. Yeah. yeah comes yeah. off a hole. Yeah. And that is called the North Ramp Road. It goes right here. So if you, and I'm going to ask you to slide that down. No, we, we, we know the area. So there's, there's the road. road. That's yeah. our entrance road to the North yeah. Ramp. And this is grass. Clock road. It's maintained yeah. right now. So the fence is definitely necessary. Okay. So you're going you're gonna to exclude that area. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Maven. I'm all set. Sean. Is there any fencing now to ex keep people out of that area? No. So there's access to the airport property? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there is, there's permanent security fence out at Holt Road. There's, a, there's an electronic gate. You need a badge swipe and everything. So, yeah, I misunderstood your question. No, no other questions. No questions. No questions. Okay. All right. Um, so I know we're going to continue, but what, what are to look back at what I uh, what I said to you. Yeah, I get back to that. Yeah, I know that area. That was always kind of like no man's land out there. I think it was the result. Dates back to original airport construction, I think. Yeah, that that all probably also dates back to the days when you needed a permit to dump, and if you didn't have one, you just went down the road and dumped over there. This is a big dump area yeah, out on no the whole road as well. No. So. Yeah, that was the unofficial dump. So. Um. Every town has one. Does. I think at this point we're continuing for final peer review. Okay. And then we'll have to start thinking about drafting an order of conditions. Two weeks, four weeks, what do you need? Get some input on what as soon you as think possible. are things we need to include. Weeks. We're asking Graves to get their report to Scott so he can get just something to Jennifer as early as possible. We plan on addressing it as soon as it's received. 
so that you'll have it well in advance of your next hearing? The next hearing is uh, 24th of February. They should have. You can always come back and talk to us. Yeah, we can. I'm away next week because uh, school vacation week for me. So, um, okay. So I would ask if you're going to be away, can you copy us on whatever Graves comes back with or through you comments so Dave and I can actually. You can copy me. I'll see email and um, copy Heidi. You have Heidi's email That'd address. That'd be great. I'll, I'll send her email address around tomorrow, so that way you're getting to right. at least somebody in my office who can say, you know, sounds like there's things in here for you to address. Or right. We want to get any revised plans, any revised reports into you, so they have it well in advance of the next hearing, so it's very possible we can close at that. So at hypothetically that speaking, if we were to close for you at the next meeting, if that was possible. When are you planning on starting work? There's a funding issue. I have Dave speak to that. Right, so we're going through the public bidding process. Right. In order to go to bid, the FA wants to have uh, permits in hand, right? Our plan is to go to bid in March, the latest, okay? And, and the reason being, this is a sizable project. We want to give contractors about four weeks to look at plans before they submit their bids. Yeah. And the grant application is due to the federal government, the FA, by May 1st. So this springtime is always our crunch time. We're always submitting. We need to collect bids, uh, recommend an award to the city, and they submit a grant by the first. Right. Then what happens is the FAA has to do their processing, get the grant in order, get the paperwork in order. We start construction usually late summer. So we will probably start hopefully August, maybe first of September with that construction. But that order is key, the order conditions is key for the actual bid package that goes out. Meeting OOC if we're in ideal situation. And that was Mar oh, oh, and the next hearing that we would meet at would be well, the, next, the next hearing we have is the 24th. That would be the earliest that we could possibly close, and then we have 21 days from that date okay. to uh, render a decision. Yeah. Um, so if I'm away next week, I won't be drafting. Okay. So to, to expedite things uh, in between the meetings, it's, it's you guys need to work together. That's the permission I want from the commission that we can. Anybody have any objection with them working together? Right. Permission granted. Thank you. <laughs> we'll take care of it. You'll have the stuff. You'll have what we consider to be best and final. All right. To you. So. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. It. So I need a motion to continue. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? There are none. It is continued. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Chairman. You have it back. This is a big project. <laughs> it is a big project. This is a big project. Yes, it is. Okay, next one is uh, 242-1620, a COC request for 179 Osgood Street. What do we have? The fence. Famous the fence. fence. The yeah. famous fence. Since I got stuck in the parking lot, um, <laughs> taking the photo for the... Uh, this is the Parson Barn House. This is the Parson Barn House. I saw, I drove by. There is a fence there already. There's a there's a there's a guardrail there. They finally put it. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. I just saw it. Isn't it? You really can't I just saw that. I did a drive by. It looks like they might have spent six thousand dollars on that. Sixty five. I'm sorry, but maybe a little less. But before we get into that, that that discussion like that is why I was having a hard time biting my lip when the gentleman was objecting to the stone wall and whining about how expensive it might be. It's like I'm sitting there saying, I, uh, uh, just be quiet. Um, <laughs> so I did ask, we did have some dumping issues over the fence in previously. Oh. So not before, when the fence was there. Prior to that, pre, they were, pre, there were some um, landscape dumping issues. So you had asked that they put some markers on the fence, which are not there. So I'm recommending that you issue the order of conditions. Someone's already coming down to pick up the markers tomorrow. We will not officially hand them that said certificate of compliance until those markers, three of them, are on the fence. So I'm recommending full and final COC um, pending marker placement. Okay. Any questions, Al? I have no questions. Jack? That picture says Good it night. all. Yep. Nothing. No questions. I'm, I'm just... I don't really like the color, but that's okay. Well, <laughs> I think um, that, co that, that, that color is going to that color is going to change, right? It's, it's going to weather. It's going to be great. It's going to weather. Then the aesthetics of the trees. You know? I don't. I don't believe that that is a. Um, it's it's not a. Uh, 
a pressure treated wood. I believe that's just a. That's oak. It's just an oak, yeah. so that's going to weather naturally, and it's going to look beautiful. It'll, it'll be beautiful. look a lot better than. It'll be beautiful. And and it will look like people could bring their horses up there and tie it to them. Well, it also looks like important. it also looks like if if a resident were to pull into the parking lot and accidentally miss the break, right. they may be saved from going down the slope. Yep. Which I think is part of the plan. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we don't want them disturbing the wetlands. We also don't want them going down the slope. <laughs> so. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I move that we grant the COC request for 179 Osgood Street pending three markers, 242-1620. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Matching the analysts. So the next um, matter I already discussed with the chairman is um, regarding a support, a support letter for a CPA request to protect a uh, farm in North Andover with a CR. The CPA request will have to go to town meeting, obviously, if approved by um, by the CPC. And um, the farm is. Oh, I have it's 52 a acres in North Andover. It's, it's 100. It's 100 plus acres total, but 52 of those 100 yeah, are located some of it's in, in North Andover. In Boxford. Um, it's likely if this is approved that the commission would hold the CR. Um, um, I've drafted a support letter, showed it to Lou. He was in favor. If anyone wants to read the said support letter. But um, the Friends of North Andover Trails has submitted a support letter. Um, it's, it's in priority habitat. It's uh, prime farmland. It's... So I just... Uh, I always ask the same question, so you know what's coming. Who, who has the oversight and control over, over the over the parcel once the CI, when and if a CI were granted, and when and if the town accepts it, and the ink is dry on the deal? Who 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 is actually? Um, it would be this commission in concert with Essex County Greenbelt, which is also the way we're currently working um, Windrush. Well, somewhat in a way that we're working Windrush Farm. We we work with them. They hold the CR. We own the property. Um, the nice thing about co-holding a CR is the town. Um, Greenbelt has agreed to take on the CR responsibilities, which include the baseline documentation report, the ongoing monitoring, um, the mapping, all that sort of thing. So that doesn't fall to Heidi and I, which is a, a huge um, win on our part. Um, but the town would also be involved in any enforcement actions that needed to occur, would have to well, co-sign on any trails I'm more, or... I'm more referring to activities. Um, th th this is a, a, a substantial piece of property. And... Um, the potential owners are only allowing limited trail access, so they're going to continue to farm a good portion of this um, and have a, a house lot or a maintained ownership yep. of a portion by the street. Yep. So it's not like the, the activities... There's also a gas line and a power line that runs no, through it. So I'm, I'm very, very familiar with the, with the property and, and the family. I'm very much in favor of the project. I have no objection whatsoever. I just like to know going forward. It's 50-50. 50-50. That's okay. Well, I suppose. So they can't do anything without us, and we can't do anything without them. But I don't really see that as being a... Um, well, we have some learned attorneys on this commission that will tell you that it never really means what it says, but I guess we'll have to take it. As far as the amounts paid, is this typical for something like this, with 50 coming from one and 325 coming from the other? It wouldn't be 50 in the purchase price because, um, well, I, I wasn't, I, again, I'm just presenting this to you for a support letter. I wasn't involved in the negotiations. Yeah. Um, a, Greenbelt did the negotiations with the landowner. They're only presenting it to the town um, as a mechanism to protect the property. That in and of themselves, they're not capable of purchasing it. There's some from coming from Boxford. The Boxford land is undevelopable based on zoning in Boxford. They do not allow development in Boxford that does not have a roadway in Boxford. There's no way to access the property from the Boxford side, only from the North Andover side. So they can't develop in Boxford. It reduces the value of the property, but also um, limits the amount probably Boxford's willing to contribute to the protection. Yeah. But what about, um, what is the... Sure. So if the value of the land is, well, not the value, if the, if the purchase price of the land is 375 and S, the green belt is I'm only... I'm not really sure we want to get into the numbers and negotiations. It's not, I don't know where the deals stand, so... But, no, but see, I think Sean's... These are discussions for the CPC Green, and the CPA. Not up any money. 
the Not money's even. all the well, money. They, any 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 money that is when and if the deal is made, yeah. the money's coming from our community uh, preservation and yep. Oxford's community preservation. Green, Greenbelt's not putting up any. Not even fifty thousand. No, they're putting fifty thousand dollars towards um, um, all the the costs to um, okay. appraisals yep. and okay. um, administrative costs, all sorts okay. of other. Yeah. Which but is why I asked about the dominion and control issue. Right. Um, that's that to me. It may not seem like a big deal, but it can be. Um, it may not be ever, but it can be. Well, those but will be things that we then have to discuss at a at a subsequent public meeting. All I'm asking for is a letter of support for the the project as a whole. And, and I okay. Not not for any part of the deal that will all be negotiated later. As far as um, holding conservation restrictions. The board of selectmen want to know if we support the project or not. They they don't want to know. This is voluntary. Greenbelt's asking for our support of the project to present it to the um, Community Preservation Committee. Gotcha. Do we want to see the land protected? Are we interested in protecting it? I think that's the question before you tonight. The how and the what will so all be worked we're not, out we're later. So we're not locking in a CR. We're not locking in a CR. So the CR is to be to be determined to, later. To be determined. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. But we are locking in our support for Greenbelt seeking three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Correct. Yeah, from, from the town. The town. Marblehead. Marblehead. I mean. Uh, that would be good Rubber. if Marble. I, I, I like that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Doug, I like that. <laughs> Doug, <laughs> I think got something That's a fine idea. Yeah. I like the it. Town yeah. of He's going to draft the documents on this. <laughs> now, the, the question I would have is right. this. Is this money already in the coffers of the town? Yeah. Yes. yeah the, the Are they going to end up increasing the tax they put on us because yeah. of this? Well, we have we, the money's there. I mean, they've raised taxes in this town enough already. Well. Taxes is a subject we could discuss at another time, yeah. but I would agree with you. But this is part of the taxes they it's levy on. Already, yeah, there's already, already your, your, uh, we, we already pay into the community preservation fund. I know we do, but if they, they decide, well, we're going to pay this, we need more money. No. No, my understanding is they've got it. My understanding of the project is they've got it. So do we receive a benefit by um, Essex Greenbelt becoming a co-controller of this property? Right. So. We have multiple CRs in town, yep. and my ability to monitor each of them yearly is limited. Um, Heidi and I try to walk at least two, three of them per year. Um, I walk some of them. So other organizations hold plenty of CRs in town. Mazarenko Farm, um, um, Half Mile Hill um, are both in the hands of the trustees of reservations. They do the monitoring. We're not required to do the monitoring. We own the property. Anytime we have to do the monitoring, we then also have to do the enforcement. If, if adjacent properties encroach on the farm, if something's not going right um, on the farm itself, we're, we're the ones responsible for the enforcement. What's being offered in this negotiation is that Greenbelt would be the responsible party to do that kind of work, mm -hmm. taking the burden off the town and, and us, basically. Yeah, I mean, I think to preserve, you know, a natural parcel like this, pretty sizable, contiguous with, you know, another pretty big parcel in Boxford is is within our interest of what we're all about in conservation. I think um, um, this will go before town meeting, and um, it'll have to be defended by the CPC. Um, I think a lot of the elements are... Um, you touched on in the letter, Lou, and um, you know having it be consistent with the uh, the recreation plan, the conservation recreation plan, uh, open space plan um, is is right. The the hiking element is good. It's a it's a benefit to the town because of that, um, as well as preservation of these uh, of the rare species. So. You know, it, it makes sense for us to do this. I think um, we're, but it, we're not the ones defending it at town meeting. That's right. that's the thing. You know, we we weighed in from a natural standpoint, from the open space and recreation plan standpoint, um, and it and it de definitely fits our goals. Um, it's up to the town whether they want to commit CP, CPA funds to do it. Um, one thing I I do ask Jen is is there is there parking? Has, has Essex County or has um, Essex County Greenbelt 
done any planning for parking along um, what I, I Dale don't Street or Ipswich Road? I don't commit to anything, but yes, I agree the access point has been determined. I don't think it's off of Dale Street, though. I think it's off of the something else. It looks like. It looks like that's a logical yeah, it's, spot. Yeah, it's back there. I'm pretty, yeah. I'm fairly certain, but I, like I said, I don't want to say. I, I just think that's where it is. And it would be a have... loop trail because there's a big wetland that you can't cross. It's the headwaters to um, Fishbrook, I think. I think so. Yeah, and which ultimately feeds into the Ipswich River. So actually, the, the, this this wetland system is, is significant on the Boxford side, and if, if you were to hike it, if you had the mind to hike it. You'd end up in that, um, you know, the big standing freshwater, de dead water on Winter Street, where all the yeah, uh, the yeah. nesting takes yeah. place. That system connects to this system um, uninterrupted. Um, it, it's 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 a tremendous. There's a lot of there's a lot of very dense area there, but it's all connected. You can get a, a great distance. So it, it, from that perspective, it, it really is an important piece. I just I was more concerned about. Uh, who was calling the shots? And Jen answered it. Uh, sounds like we're all we're both calling the shots. And is um, <clears throat> Boxford's Con Conservation Commission being asked to support a CR as well? I believe so. Yeah. With the same type of um, fifty. They have a land control? trust too, so it's their situation is somewhat different than ours. The land trust in Boxford can hold the CR. We don't have such an organization, so. Is it going to be managed by Essex Greenbelt on the Boxford side as well? I believe that's the proposal. Or co-held, anyway. Co -held. And what's the um, this unrestricted 9.7 acres, what's that referring to? It just gives the family the right to do what they want. Uh, well, though, I'm guessing there's allowed uses. I, I haven't read the agreement in its entirety. I read the proposal that's before us, but that's the likely the area where they live. Yep. It's where they live where and where they are. could develop. Yep. But knowing that frontage, there's a stream that runs through there. There's the gas, um, yep. the gas pump, you know, um, station there. Well, there's power lines and, and there's, there's, uh, lines. There's, there's Maritimes Northeast. There's all kinds of stuff there. But it but just means yeah. they can do what they want in that area versus it the, being a part of the restriction. But it is going to be now owned by the town of North Andover. No, nope, we Burton. would not so own it. So that is going to still maintain in their fee. The interest. whole property would be their, they would be selling That's development good. rights. Okay. We ju we're just buying a conservation restriction, restriction on right. this yep. area right. of London, bold yellow. Yep. The deed is still going to be in their name. In their yep, name. They, they will retain title. And they can continue to continue pay the fields uh, or whatever uses the conservation restriction under 61A regulation. gives them. Gotcha. Usually okay. the CR is trying to keep it as it's continued. Continue the use. use that it's under right now. Okay. Motion. What, Authorize the chair to sign the support letter. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Voted against or something, so you would have to change the letter. <laughs> it said unanimous. <laughs> sometimes these things, draft. these yeah. things, it's yeah. just a draft, but sometimes these things get lost in the signage. Oh, yeah. We have to make special trips. Nothing special in our meetings get lost. Right about. Uh, we have an enforcement <clears throat> order. Uh, 242.15.59, and they request to continue till when? Uh, he is coming in at the March 9th meeting um, to present his continued uh, request for uh, extension so we can uh, deal with the in No, he said he would not be back till the beginning of March was what I understood. Oh, it has to be on, I'm sorry, the extension has to be on the next meeting. He will not be in town. We will be continuing that. So I recommend we continue the enforcement matter to March 9th. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. And a motion to adjourn. No decisions today. I move that we adjourn this meeting. Uh, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed.